hi everyone and welcome to my channel my name is Mrs. B today I will go through 2017 exam question number seven so it's this one here um, the first thing we have been asked to do is to find the first derivative to find the slope of this function and we can see here we have um, two functions together so the first one is x second one is e to the power of negative x so you can use product rule dy dx is equal to now sometimes students um, do this step by step identifying the first function which is x and then finding derivative derivative of x is 1 so um, function v is equal to e to the power of negative x and I have already explained this before um, derivative of this function is e to the power of negative x times um, negative 1. Now don't forget to substitute so a rule is u dash v plus u v dash and also remember that you do have correct um, formulas on your reference sheet. So let's um, substitute so we're gonna go this first, so 1 times e to the power of negative x is e to the power of negative x and then we have this bit here so that's going to be plus x times e to the power of negative x and then times 1 so this can be you know simplified um, so e to the power of negative x power of negative x and this bit here plus and minus is going to give us minus so it's minus x e to the power of negative x so that one is done let's have a look at the next part hence show that integral of x e to the power of negative x is equal to this bit here so we have to calculate integration um, when it says hands, pretty much what they're telling you that you do have to use something that you have calculated before. Now, if we found the derivative of this function, it's equal to whatever we have here. If we go backwards, we should find this original function. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go like this. Um, antiderivative of this part here e to the power of negative x take away x e to the power of negative x dx it is equal to this part okay so it is equal to x e negative x and plus c constant because the next step I'm going to do is to use one of the integration properties to separate, to spread out those two terms. So I'm going to do this integration of e to the power of negative x dx, take away integration of x e to the power of negative x dx is equal to x e to the power of negative x and plus c. Now let's have a look if there is anything familiar, so something that we can recognize or use. So uh, one more time, we need to find this, and it does look like this, doesn't it? Well, we have this negative sign here. So uh, what we can do now, if we want to, we can multiply everything by negative one, everything. So um, which means this bit here I'm going to use red is going to become negative this is going to become positive this will turn into negative and this part here can use negative or positive doesn't make any difference because it's just adding constant which could be positive or negative now that we have this part here that's what we need so I'm going to go and move everything that I don't need to the other side so um, this plus C can just go there I'm gonna move this bit to the other side so it's plus integration e to the power of negative x dx so therefore we 
derivative it's integration of x e to the power of negative x dx e t is equal to negative x e to the power of uh, negative x plus antiderivative of e to the power of negative x is just what let's have a look that's going to be negative e to the power of negative x and then we have plus c so it does look like that we have shown what we have been asked to um just uh, to remind you uh, make sure that you do know all these rules or you don't have to know them but you can put them on your reference sheet okay let's go to next you know, one more um it's a double i if there was you know the constant oops i'm on a bit okay so we do have the graph and um of the function that we have used before and what we have been asked to find an estimate for the area um, between the x-axis and the vertical lines where x is equal 1 um, and x is equal to 5 1 to 5 so you can see that we already have two um, rectangular shapes and each is two units wide 1 2 unit 1 2 unit so and it has been used to calculate the overestimate for this area so um, please note um, they have finding the sum 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 um, the overestimate so we're going to use um, correct notation so what we have been asked to do sum um, we do know how to find the area of the rectangular shape so this is one so um, it's pretty much base times height so base is two times height and this is the length so this is the height at this point so we do know that x is equal to one here so how we find the y uh, is just using this function here because this is our y so it's f at one so you can substitute it can just go f of one plus now the other the area of the other rectangular shape it's again two times this one here and this is the point so this is the height so it's f of 3 equal to how are you going to find f1 f3 so f1 is equal to you replace the values of um, x's with the 1 and it's going to give you an answer and it does look like it is 0 0.368 so check that one f of 2 or 3 this one is 3 for us um, is equal again the same thing so you replace the value 3 times e to the power of negative 3 and should give you something 0 approximately 149 149 so and if you calculate all these 2 times whatever we have here plus 2 times whatever we have for f of 3 you should get approximation of 1.03 it does look like we have um, three decimal places as they have asked so three decimal places that one is done now the next part is um, new overestimate um, we have to use um, four rectangular shapes of equal width so I'm gonna delete this so because we have been asked to draw um, Okay, the four one draw four rectangles that could be used to produce a new overestimate. As the domain is between one and five, so and we need four rectangular shapes. So if you do remember um, that um, how to find the length of each, um, the width of each rectangular shape. So it's the um, maximum value of x, which is five, take away the minimum, which is one over how many um, uh, rectangular shapes you're going to have so it's 4 equal to 4 over 4 and it's going to equal to 1 it does give you the width of each rectangular shape okay let's start drawing so it's between 0 and 1 so it is overestimate no it's not be between 0 and 1 
is one, we start from one. So if two, three, four, and five, so I'm gonna have like la, 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 like that. So, and because we are talking about overestimate, so we're looking in, you know, this, um, this um, width, um, where the function has the highest point. Is it when we x is equal to one, or is it when x is equal to two? And you can see when x is equal to two, that function has lower value. So therefore, so this is gonna be our overestimate. So same thing is happening for the next one, the next rectangle, rectangle. So between two and three, two and three. So we are looking at two, and we're looking at x equal to three, where the function has greater value, and we can see the graph is higher when x is equal to two. That's going to be another rectangular shape, and um, you do the same uh, for the rest. So, has been drawn um, one mark, and now we need to calculate the mu over estimate. Um, similar to what has been done in BI, so we have two. And instead of saying two times, no, it's not two. So it was two before, but now is what? One. Yep, that's right. So one times the height plus one times the height plus one times the height. So um, I'm going to have this one here, but you don't have to, you know, um, use it because it does. It does not going to change um, any values. One times f at one, like here f at 1 plus and then again 1 times f at 2 and then again plus 1 times f at 3 plus 1 times f at 4. Um, now how are you going to find f of 2, f of 3? Same way as we have done it here, okay, by substitution and then when you calculate this, um, please have one more line here saying, for example, 0 0.368 and um, plus 0 0.271 plus 0 0.149 plus 0 0.073. Um, I have already those numbers calculated here, so I don't think I'm doing that in my head or anything. <laughs> Um, so approximation is 0 0.861, okay? So, and please note how I have used, um, you know, approximation sign here, because this is already with, um, you know, rounding up or down. So let's have a look at the last bit. I it is negative, no, no, okay. Think of the question, yes, it says with reference to your uh, part A double I find the exact values exact 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 so that's the key word so we don't need want any decimal places or anything so um, find area 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 so it is equal to area is equal to uh, between one and five here's our function so we're trying to find the area under the curve and now Using the part, let me have a look what's notation for that one. Um, um, a, 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 what is, where did we have that antiderivative? Um, we have it on the previous page. Let's go have a look. So where is it? In A double I, from a double i um, we do know the antiderivative of this is negative x e negative x take away e negative x and then between one and five so all you have to do here is to substitute to uh, uh, replace the values of um, x replace the values of x so x replace with five x replace with five x replaced with 5 and then we do it one more time using x equal to 1. So 
A negative x is going to be negative 5 e to the power of negative 5 take away e to the power of negative 5. So that's 1 and then take away the differences between two areas. Um, and same thing with 1, negative 1 e to the power of negative 1 take away e to the power of negative 1. Um, it does look nasty but you can see that this part here negative 5 of something take away one of something of the same thing so it's going to give us negative six of that same thing then take away this one um it's again exactly the same so negative one take away the same thing is going to give us negative two so i'm going to put negative two here negative two e negative one so um which means that this is negative 6e to the power of negative 5. Negative, negative is going to give us positive 2e to the power of negative 1. So now this is the exact value. So um, some people prefer to have this in fraction form. So uh, what color I'm going to use? Let's use red. So uh, negative 6 over e to the power of because we have moved this in denominators so and then plus 2 over e to the power of 1 or if you bothered with you know having negative 1 first you can swap it if you need to show that something is equal to something so yeah so that would be it for that one so the part d uh, want us to compare our overestimate calculation from part b with your answer to part c so I'm just going to write down what was um, the answer for BI. So BI was um, approximation, the area under the curve, 1.034. So then the ba uh, BII uh, approximation was 0 0.86, I think 1. So remember here we had 2 rectangle, um, 2 rectangles and here we had four and then in part c so we calculated exact value under the curve and if you simplify this answer i mean if you just calculate um it's gonna give you the value which i have somewhere yeah it's gonna give you 0 0.695 so what we can see here because we have to make you know, uh, comment on the effect that increasing the number of rectangles used has, you know, what um, effect has on the accuracy of the estimated obtained. So we can see here we had two um, rectangles, so it was 1.0.34 approximately. Then we moved to having four. So, and then if we have exact value, um, we have 0 0.6 so what we can say that as the number of so i'm going to write that so as the number of rectangulars rectangulars increases 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 the overestimate the over over uh, over estimate over estimate decreases decreases approaching approaching the exact value of the area okay, okay. and that would be it for all for this um thank you for listening bye see you next time